Welcome to the UK Travel Planning Podcast. Your host is the founder of the UK Travel Planning website, Tracy Collins. In this podcast, Tracy shares destination guides, travel tips, and itinerary ideas, as well as interviews with a variety of guests who share their knowledge and experience of UK travel to help you plan your perfect UK vacation. Join us as we explore the UK from cosmopolitan cities to quaint villages, from historic castles to beautiful islands, and from the picturesque countryside to seaside towns. Hi and welcome to episode 50 of the UK Travel Planning Podcast. In this week's episode, I chat with Marissa Barker and her mum Cindy all about their trip around the UK in April and May this year. You'll find out lots about how Marissa organised her trip, including how she took into consideration the needs of her travel party because there were actually eight of them who travelled over, including her young son and her parents. So without further ado, let's introduce Marissa and her mum, Cindy. So I'm really happy this episode that we have got Marissa and her mum, Cindy, to do their trip report from their recent visit around uh, the UK. So you guys were in England and Scotland and Wales, so you did yeah. really good, to, loads of Great Britain. So um, I thought it'd be great for you guys to come on to the podcast and tell us all about your trip. But first things first, would you like to introduce yourselves, please? Okay. I'm Marissa, and then my mom, Cindy, is here with me, and we're from Maine in the States, Yeah, and we just did the three weeks in the UK and had a great time. I know, it was great. It was great following you as well, because you were putting some pictures in our Facebook group, so it was, uh, Mm -hmm. and because I know we've been talking for quite a while about your trip, haven't we? So it was really good to to kind of follow as you went along. So who went with you on the trip, Marissa? We had a group that kind of like bits and pieces of the trip, myself, my Then four-year-old son, my dad and my brother traveled for the whole, like, 27 days. And then my mom joined a weekend. And then the family that I work with joined for the first two weeks of it. Yeah, so it was quite complex because you had quite a few people kind of flying in. in. (laughs) Lots of moving pieces. Yeah, and and a lot of fun, though, especially Mm -hmm. having um, the little girl that Marissa nannies for. Well, she's not, she's 13 now. 13, but... (laughs) She was wonderful with the now today is Finn's fifth birthday. Yeah. Um, so she was wonderful with him. They had a great time running and playing together, mm-hmm. especially what, like Dinosaur Beach and things like that. Yeah. Well, what was lovely about your trip is that it was multi generational. Mm-hmm. So, how many all together were you when you were there all together? Was it 10? Eight. Eight. At once. And then, yeah, eight at once. And then six. Yeah, because it was dad's 70th birthday like this year and so it was kind of a bucket list for him get him to travel before it's too late perfect so should can you give us a a kind of a brief overview of uh of the trip yeah Yeah. so we ended up we flew into london and then got a transport from doug what is it menage tours oh yes yes. and uh right down to cornwall st ives where we did like the first four days um loved it gorgeous weather we got really lucky the whole trip really um we did a cornwall tour with him and then we ended up uh doing a night in lyme regis yep before making our way back to london to meet up with mom she flew in on a friday and met us at our hotel and then we took the train took the train up to edinburgh yep and did two nights there had like a full independent day and then did um we got picked up by our tour guide in at our airbnb and then driven up through the highlands up stayed in inverness for night and then went to sky yeah and then fort williams and then a night in glasgow it was a very brief night it was like just just basically a sleep stop i want to go back to that did you get the train from fort william down to glasgow or yeah, yeah we did fort williams to glasgow and then glasgow to durham yep to start our next leg of our tour with a different guide and then did the lakes district for two nights I uh, dropped off in Liverpool, yeah, and then we took the train from Liverpool to Conwy, did a night there, and then the train from, and uh, we got picked up with a tour guide again, and did some chunks of Wales and England, and then yep. ended in London at the end. Wow. Yeah, was it three? Was it twenty-seven days altogether? Yeah, I think it was right around there. Not enough time. Yeah, I know you said that. Though you, you, I mean, you, you did actually cover a lot of ground actually in in the time yeah. that you were there. But you did Fast see and furious. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way days. you're describing it, Cindy. 
Yeah. Fast and Furious in the UK. This should be a, a title of a new movie. <laughs> yeah. And you did hit a lot of the kind of, I mean, the fact that you managed to get all the way down to Cornwall and all the way up to the final, like sort of to Inverness is, is amazing, actually, that you started yeah. to go up to that point. Because um, those are kind of pretty opposite parts of the country. Yes. <laughs> the one yeah. place that we missed that was a item that our group wanted to do was Orkney, but I could not fit Orkney and St. Ives. I was like, I cannot do both of them. I'm sorry. And since you did an amazing job planning it as it was, honestly. So, yeah. and, you know, Orkney, yes, Orkney is going that little bit further. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, you can save that up to next time because I, yeah. I highly recommend it. Because that's Orkney's the plan going. is doing the islands more next time. Yeah, and Orkney is amazing. And you were very lucky, actually, because the weather was, was really good when you were over as well, which, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's I mean, it's lovely traveling it, whatever time of year, but it just makes it a little bit nicer when you've got a little bit of warmth and sunshine. Our guide in Sky said that we were experiencing, like, August weather. He's like, yeah. we get, like, a week of this in August, so. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant, because when we were there last year, we didn't we didn't get brilliant weather. We, had, we were there for three days, and I think it rained for two, so it wasn't, mm-hmm. wasn't the best, but it was still a lovely place to go. And that's why I had scheduled the three and a half days in Sky, as I thought we'd get a bad weather day at least. So. Yeah, that was actual bonus that you didn't because um, mm-hmm. I know when we when we talked about it, it, and I do say that to people when they go the the plan like one day in Sky or two is that you've got to think you know it, just in case the weather's not great you know yeah. you have to kind of plan around that. So talking about planning, I know that you you planned you started planning this quite a long time ago because there was a lot involved in it. Um, yeah. So how did you talk us through your planning process, Marissa? Um, well. Probably like 2019, I started kind of looking at it and planning it casually and kind of like looking at all the bits and pieces and doing like a bunch of like rewrites and plans. And then like we originally looked at like a bus tour and then we changed our minds and we wanted to do self-guided and we looked at driving and I was like, no, we're not driving it. Like I can't, can't do that. So it was a lot of moving pieces and I was just kind of like casually putting a list together to get it done before my son was in school and my dad was too much older. Um, so it really worked out to be this year. And then, so I started probably late 2021, early 2022, really like planning really, really intensely. Yeah. Um, getting stuff like booked and organized and I found your travel group and it was such a huge help. I remember when you, I remember when you joined cause it, yeah, cause it seemed a long time in advance that you were planning, which is fine. And I know yeah. you kind of had a lot of questions cause you were debating about how to get around the country because you mm-hmm. kind of had definite places that you want to go and also because you were traveling there was quite a few of you traveling as yes. well and you also had to think about the fact that again that multi-generational thing is mm-hmm. like you know how could you keep the kids happy and also yes. you know all the different needs of everybody traveling on the trip um so it was it was brilliant so and I know you you've been a brilliant member of the the Facebook group and I love the fact that you're still part of the group even though you've you know you've returned um, oh, yeah. we'll be back yeah, it's and it's it's wonderful because like, you're sharing your experiences and your knowledge and helping mm-hmm. out. So, so I really appreciate that. So I just want to say thanks for that as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. I, the group was such a huge resource for me. Like as soon as I found it and like I could search through the group and like your website and stuff and find pieces that I was like stuck on. Like I'd be like, how do I get from here to here? And I'd be like, oh, look, there's a article about it and figure it out from there. Or the links. You or the links. Real, real good links. And then like. I debated back and forth about doing the itinerary consult because I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to like, I don't know, but it was my anxiety. It, it made it so much easier to like meet with you and Doug and go over like, okay, yep, this looks good. Here's my suggestion for this. And like such like really made my life so much easier. <laughs> I think it's often, um, cause we do a lot. I think it's often the reassurance that we can give and, and mm-hmm. often the little tips and little things that we go through that can make things, you know, less stressful when you're planning, especially yeah. when you, you know, it's somewhere you've not been before, mm-hmm. you know, you were planning for a lot of people. So that's kind of, we feel that responsibility yeah. of making sure that it's going to work out. Um, so, you know, and it was great doing the consult with you as well, because you you did have, you do, did have a good plan. You already knew what mm-hmm. you wanted. So helping you tweak it and as you say, just helping you feel more confident about what yeah. you planned uh was really helpful yeah. so so obviously we were just talking before we started recording the podcast actually about the fact there's so many places to visit in the UK yes so how did you go about initially deciding where you wanted to go um I probably started a list of places in the UK I wanted to go when I was like probably a kid yeah 
just from like travel shows. We, we grew up watching like a lot of travel shows and then just kind of like seeing once I figured out what group who was going with us in our group, uh, asking them like what their priorities were and what they wanted to do and then doing like a lot of research and like back to your site, like, OK, what do you recommend and how long in each place you had said and kind of what I could fit in and yeah. having to subtract some. And I think some of it, too, was she really took into consideration the, as you said, the multi-generations and the different areas of interest and likes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and knowing that her, like she, knowing her dad wanted to go to Wales because yeah. he has a lot of family history there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Scotland because there was a lot of family history. Mm -hmm. Um didn't want to go to the dinosaur beach because, right. you know, he's four. Doing, doing yeah. <laughs> beach activities, doing fun activities like that. Um, knowing that her brother loves history and so doing some of those historic Hadrian's things. Wall was his absolute must. So oh, everybody yeah. got to, like, pick something that they really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And she found a way to incorporate it into the daily agenda, which we lived by. <laughs> <laughs> her dad lived by it was great every morning yeah. he was checking the agenda he, it was he had his cute. itinerary yeah. Awesome. yeah so how did you once you got all those places from everybody um because and it's great that everybody had their kind of their, their first choice and their interest mm -hmm. how did you then go about how to put that you know how to put that into an itinerary so it made sense I kind of so I actually ended up having to flip our itinerary like fairly last minute um not last minute, I guess six months in advance. I had it all planned out and sorted and we were going to fly into London, go up to Scotland and at the end do Cornwall and then yeah. fly out from London. But the schedule for the kid and Annie's school was changed. So we had to switch it for her vacation and start with St. Ives. Yeah. Um, so I kind of like looked at the map and to see like, okay, go from London. It's this long to get here and I can do this many days here. And then like had it calendared out and then like, okay, prioritize doing three days in sky versus three days somewhere else. Like mm -hmm. do two days here, three days here instead. And kind of like seeing on the map where it would be and how to get there and stuff. Yeah. I think a map uh, using a map is really invaluable. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, Cause I've got that, I've got that new challenge and, and in that there's, there's maps in that. And I, I was yeah. thinking it's a really good idea to map it out because you know, you might find that some places are closer together than you actually realize. Mm -hmm. And some places are a lot further apart than you sometimes yeah. realize. And like, for example, getting down to Cornwall, getting to St. Ives, it's mm -hmm. a long way to go. Yes. Um, and often people don't realize, I was talking to Doug the other day about Cornwall, and often people don't realize just how far it is to actually yeah. go down to Cornwall. Um, you know, and I think you did it the right way because getting he picked you up at the airport, so you mm -hmm. didn't have to worry when you arrived. Oh, yeah. Um, and then you had the drive, and obviously, and you stopped off on on places along the way as well. So you, that becomes like a tour on your first mm -hmm. day, which is and our it was a six hour transport, which after we had like a six an hour flight. So because we're lucky, we get a direct flight, and it's not comparable to most people's. Yeah. So we caught off the flight, and a lot of us didn't sleep on the flight. So some of us napped on the ride down, and we didn't have to think about it because we got the transport. And like transport ended up being probably less than it would have been for us to all take the train or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was another so. thing I think you did. You did a lot of cost comparisons mm -hmm. too on the best ways to travel and the best. And she looked at so many different bus tours and cost comparisons and places that they went and we just yeah. couldn't. So that's when she decided to just create her own tour because mm -hmm. we couldn't find exactly what we wanted. Yeah. And the advantage was is that because there's quite a few of you, um, you could do the private, uh, you could mm -hmm. have the, the private mm -hmm. rides because you could share the cost out. And that's exactly. the advantage of doing that. Um, so you had all of the advantages of having somebody drive you, somebody guide you, mm -hmm. um, but be able to split the cost yeah. of, of that between you all of you, which is brilliant. And just having a tour guide, you get such a better viewpoint of everything. Like yeah. you you're driving down the road and he's pointing out like, oh, this is this historical building, which you would have just driven by it and known nothing. Yeah. Or like, oh, this is where these people were from and lived or like the history of things. And I really like, really value that like extra part to it. Like instead of just I driving think, myself around. I think that's a really important point. And it's um, because obviously we've got some, 
preferred partners that we work mm-hmm. with with UK Travel Plan, and obviously, you know, Doug and Manish Tours mm-hmm. is one of those. And I think, and that, that you know, we've got John England down the southeast of England, yep. Victoria, the Cotswolds, and Mark. We've got loads of people now that yeah. we work with, and I. And I part of the kind of reason that I, I love working with those people is because of the value that they bring when you go mm-hmm. to those areas because yeah. you learn so much more than and it's nice if you want to do your own driving trip that's absolutely fine but I think if you have got the possibility of actually having somebody that knows it knows the area can guide you around as well as driving so you can sit mm-hmm. back and relax and enjoy it and not have to worry about the rules of road and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff but you're yeah. learning at the same time you can fully take it in can't you yeah yeah, I think that I would highly recommend if people are considering visiting the UK that they do some sort of guided tour the first time as opposed to self-drive, unless you know somebody that's over there. Yeah. I think at like my son, now that he's done the tour, he he's adventurous enough and confident enough that he would do a self-drive tour. Yeah. But it was really a great introduction. And if you are have any kind of anxiety about getting places on time and doing things. It was just so nice to be able to be picked up, relaxed. You didn't have to worry about anything Mm -hmm. other than getting in and out of the vehicle and and you could chit chat with people and just relax and enjoy it. And that's it. And also for you, Marissa, as well, because obviously you had your son with you. And I know what it's like when I used to travel with my daughter, when you've got a little one with you, you're always more preoccupied kind of thinking about them. And but at least if you're not driving, you can actually spend Mm -hmm. the time, you you can spend the time with them. You didn't have to worry about, you know, things every night about what was organized because somebody else was doing it. And you did a really good job of that kind of each part of your holiday, you know, when you went from the bit that you did yourself and then you went to the next um, Mm -hmm. driver guide. So that worked very well. And obviously you had different people as well, which is, which is a nice way of doing it, I think as well. Yeah. And I think starting in St. Ives, it really worked out well for us because it gave us like we had, we were there Easter Sunday was our first full day. We landed on the Saturday and we had Saturday to drive down. But like our full day on Sunday, we could kind of just do, I planned it just to kind of be around St. Ives and we ended up doing uh, St. Ives in the morning and then St. Michael's Mount in the afternoon and just kind of like a more low key day, like to get used to and get rested and stuff. And in case anybody had jet lag, which we actually, none of us really had any issues, it seemed. So that was good. good. (laughs) That's good. Did you enjoy St. Michael's Mount? I did. Um, We thankfully brought a carrier for my son. And I had my brother carry him because uh, yeah. some serious steppage. Yeah. Oh yes, we call it the <laughs> battle. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody. But when we went last year, Doug went up to the the house of the test, and I just sat on the grass enjoying the views. <laughs> I don't blame you there. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, the <laughs> views were gorgeous up at the top, but it was quite the hike. Yeah, uh, exactly. mom would have definitely done the yeah. same if I she had some, been with us. Yeah, she would have sat out that too. Yeah, yeah, I, I did it. I enjoyed it. And I just, I sent Doug to take the photographs and I said, you know what? I'm going to sit and enjoy the weather and these mm-hmm. beautiful views because it was, it was, um, stunning. Yeah. Um, so obviously you, you went to London as part of your trip as well. Um, so how did you find London? How was that? Cause obviously it's a bit busier in London. It's a major city. So I am a country girl. Yeah. For sure. I liked London. I actually, I liked once, once we were in London and in a hotel and not carrying our bags on the tube. Yeah, which is and not once fun. Once we were like settled, um, we were able to take the tube to to and uh, two places, and that app that Doug recommended was super helpful. Yeah, because I yeah. could actually you know know where I needed to go. I'll be sitting um, up there, I think probably all the transport for London Go app. There's a yeah, the train app. line, and then the, yeah. the yeah was really helpful. But um, I liked walking around it, but I definitely think we had enough time just because like we did an evening and then a full day. Yeah. And then at the end, we had another full day and an evening. And I think for us, we kind of saw what we needed to see. Um, I would definitely go back, and I'm sure there's more I could see. But, um, like, we did the British Museum at the end, which was really cool. Yeah. My son loved the sarcophaguses. Oh, yes. So that was good. That was on my brother's, like, must-see was British Museum. And then we did, like, a lot of walking on our first day, full day in London, and did just, like, the Trafalgar Square, Covenant yeah. Garden. Pop yeah. on, pop off bus. At the end, yeah. Because my brother has a friend that lives in London, so we saw her husband perform in Covenant Garden and stuff. So that oh, was brilliant. Yeah. Cool. So you got to do London twice. Yes. I only did the tail end. Mm-hmm. And um, for me, 
it was so busy that it wasn't, you know, as Marissa, we were more of the wide open, yeah. less busy places, but also somebody I, when I was talking about it was saying they were getting ready for the coronation too. So it yeah. probably was busier than usual. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Compare it to, but it was definitely, it was, it was very busy. Cause I was there. Um, because obviously you're there at the tail end of the Easter holiday, yeah. so the kids are off school, so it's really busy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was there then, and I went in uh, end of April, just I think it was the day of the London Marathon. I've never seen it as busy as it was then. Yeah. It, was, it was absolutely manic. And I think a lot of it was preparations for the coronation. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think there's just a lot. Uh, the weather was pretty good, so a lot of people yeah, we were had out. A lot of gorgeous weather, so everybody was out and about. Yeah, so, uh, you know, even, even I was like, wow, this is this is really busy, really, really mm-hmm. busy. Um, but the weekend, and of course, we ended up on a May May day was our full last day in London, so we yeah. had the bank holiday on one end and the Easter holiday on our other end in London. Yeah, so we were like, yeah, you got it. You really got it. Busy, but it gets busy. I mean, like June, June now, July and into mm-hmm. August. I think it was ex- extremely busy because of the coronation as well. Because of, then yeah. there were so many preparations going on for that. So that was all. Yeah, the- there were just so many people. It was just you know, and with such a large group. It was hard to even just walk and stay together. Yeah. You know? yeah. But it definitely is something that I probably would do again. But yeah. I think I think London and I do say, you know, to, to people on the plan the trips to the UK, yes, spend the time in London. Go and see London. Go and see the things mm-hmm. that maybe are on your list that you really want to see in London. But yeah. the best thing to do is go to London, get out of London. <laughs> you know? Yes. Absolutely. Um, because and I, you'll have you'll have realized as you've traveled around, you know, that there's um, you get out of London and you get out to the countryside and you, you'll meet so many different people. You'll hear lots of different accents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're in Wales, you're in Scotland, you're in England, yeah. you're down in Cornwall. So, you know, you'll have met lots of you in Northumberland, which is where I'm from. So mm-hmm. you'll have met lots of different people. Um, you know, and you get a different taste of the country when you when you travel around like that, for sure. Yeah. I'm really glad that we had London on both ends too, and not just like a full like four days in London because that would have been like really overwhelming. Yeah. So having like the day and a half and the day and a half bookends really was helpful, and we and planned think- our last day to be like a more low key hop on hop on bus tour yeah. and stuff because I knew we'd be exhausted. Yeah. And and that's the thing I think um, sometimes people as well don't realize just how exhausting London is. Um, I'm I'm going. I've got ten days at twentieth uh, to thirtieth of June, and I've got full on. I'm doing lots of tours, and I know I'm going to be exhausted. You know, um, so I'm kind of gearing myself up for that because it is. It's a, it's a lot of walking and, and a lot of noise and a lot of business busyness. The I didn't realize just how like restaurants they always have like loud music and a lot of people talking. Yeah. At the same time, so like that was very overstimulating. Yeah, uh, especially yeah. from my son, that was a lot. So yeah, no, <laughs> totally, totally understand, totally yeah. get that. One, one thing I think is important to to know too that we've found out when it comes to restaurants and things, if you want to have dinner somewhere, you need to make a reservation. Which that was something was, Tracy told me, but right, I don't like to right, but plan that far ahead. Well, and, and it's I, also something that we're just not used to doing. You know, it's not yeah but it definitely especially with a bigger group needed and and we're more of the oh let's we're walking about we're all getting hungry let's find a place that looks fun to eat yeah you can't do that yeah it can be <laughs> we, really we learned yeah and especially because there's a lot of i didn't have any issues in st eyes with that though no not in the small areas so we're kind of talking about food let's talk about how how did you find the food? What did you enjoy? What were your favorites? Delicious. So good. <laughs> good. I could have lived off of the fish and chips. Just everywhere. There's a kind of reputation about uh, about food not being brilliant in the UK, but actually, I don't think we had a bad meal. I think everything that I ate was delicious. That's brilliant. And we tried things, different mm-hmm. things too. We yeah. did. Uh, we went to your recommendation in London for the Dishoom, uh Indian restaurant. Yep. Which was probably my first experience with Indian food. And you enjoyed it? It was delicious. Um, not many choices for a four-year-old. No, no. But he had a mango smoothie and like a dessert. So he was... Yep. He was I bet happy. he'd be happy with that. Yep. He was pretty happy with that. So. He was pretty happy with all the ice cream. We oh, ate a lot of ice cream. Gelato, ice cream, like dessert, pretty much daily. That clotted cream. Or- oh, oh, the cream yeah. teas and St. Ives and the pasties. Mm. Oh, yeah. Did you have a favorite, Cindy? 
meal? Uh, I really like the fish and chips. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was probably my favorite. The sticky toffee pudding oh, up yes, in Isla that Sky. Was my, that was At that the, was amazing. We because yeah. when we were on Isla Sky, we were we we were in the Airbnb. Yeah, and we were right on the water, but. Some of our parties stayed at the little hotel. I the think, little old inn. The old inn. And they had a restaurant attached to it where you could make reservations if you were staying there. So we would go there for dinner each night. Yeah. And we tried the first night, I think we tried that sticky toffee pudding. And oh, my. I'm not a big dessert person, but wow. <laughs> I changed my mind. That's, that's so, that, that is always a favorite. I hear so much about that because I'm not a big um, dessert person at all. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, I'm a, I like cold desserts more than the warm desserts, but my husband, he loves his sticky toffee pudding, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, did you have it with custard or cream? Uh, they had ice cream with it. Ice cream, okay. Yeah, so my son would eat the ice cream and I'd eat the toffee pudding. So. Yeah, oh, <laughs> lovely. Now, I'm glad that you enjoyed that um, and that you enjoyed, like, all the different different foods. Did you try haggis when you were in Scotland? We did. Yeah. Um, I tried a little. No, I didn't, you try, didn't try haggis. haggis. I wasn't there we went to um, Dunvegan Castle yep. in Sky, and they had like a haggis with cheesy potato, like a oh, baked nice. potato with cheese and haggis in it. So good. The food for it being just like a cafe at yeah. a castle was amazing, and they had a venison stew there too. Yeah, the oh, lamb nice. was really good. We had lamb mm-hmm. a couple of times too. Yeah. So did you did you guys eat out all? Because I know you stayed. We talk. We can kind of talk about accommodation because I know you stayed mm-hmm. in some Airbnbs and hotels, but. Yep. How did you find in terms of catering? What did you do for, did you have the breakfast where you're staying and then have lunch out? And then um, we did a lot of eating out. Um, my son and I would stay back more often than not, uh, more often than the others did for like doing dinner at home and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think we did a couple of nights where we would do take in or like mac and cheese and stuff for him. But most of the time we went out. Yeah, on- but we would also, we would like sandwiches and stuff for lunch. Like yeah. The, I the like deals that. and stuff. Most of the stores sold the fresh sandwiches, even yep. the warm sandwiches, you know, so you could get, we would pick up some things. And mm-hmm. then when we were on the Isle of Sky tour, our tour guide had built in lunch stops yep. and places. So we would go out for yep. lunch there. And, and we stopped, he snacks. took us to stop for groceries before we got on to Sky. And so I made sure I had like lots of fruits and stuff and peanut butter and jelly for my son during the yep. day and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And a lot of the supermarkets as well, you can get the meal deals, which are excellent. Yes. So, you mm-hmm. know, they're a really good option because you get your drink and your piece of fruit or your pack of crisps mm-hmm. and your drink. I loved it. I know you mentioned before about your son, get the, the whole crisps and chips thing, because that's really confusing, isn't it? <laughs> it was apparently more confusing than I thought it would be for him because um, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, I'm getting fish and chips. You can eat, like, and it came with chips and peas. And he, he loves peas. He loves by the peas. Way. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you can eat the chips and peas. And like, I'd give him fruit and stuff before we went out for dinner to make sure yeah. he was going to be full. And then he'd have dessert. And he was like, but those are French fries. And I was like, <laughs> no, they're, they're chips here. Yeah. And he's like, no, chips are like in a bag. And I was like, yeah. no, those are crisps here. And I yeah. had to explain that to him like a dozen times. <laughs> and I think by the end of it, he was just doing it just on purpose. He's like, no, those are not chips. Those are French fries. And I was like, buddy, I think by now, you know. <laughs> What yeah, those are. the difference. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. he was so funny about it, though. Uh, it is and funny that there's different and... there's different terms that we use, you know, those chips and crisps, and you know, yeah. and because I grew up between the UK and, and and Africa, and in Africa we used to call them chips for crisps. Oh, and then I used to come back, and then I get it all confused. Yep. Like, oh, what is it? What are we yeah. calling them? Yeah. yeah. And oh, her yeah. dad and our son really liked all the different pubs and the, trying the different beers and the cask beers and things like that yeah. and the hand pumped beers, which mm-hmm. so they really were having fun trying all those different things out. Yeah, oh, I bet. I bet. No, yes, yeah, so there's a, always a favorite. I actually put a photo on in the Facebook group last week. Of, uh, I went in and took all the pic- a picture on one of the supermarkets, all the different um beers that you can buy just yes. that different i know that was a very popular post that i put on saying because mm-hmm. there's so many different t- sorts that you can get and of course all the different types of um gin that you can get as well and yeah, yeah. Well. gin just, is very popular there yeah it is yeah. really really popular mom so enjoyed the whiskey tasting oh yeah, yeah did you do that? i'm more of a um i'm more of a bourbon whiskey person and yours is more of a malted scotch whiskey yeah but i did try them and i found some that i liked oh that's good um, 
good. So let's talk about accommodation. So how did you choose your accommodation? What were your favorites? Um, well, since we had a bigger group, I yeah. tried to do like Airbnbs a lot of the time where there was like a large enough space, especially if we were going to be. So if we were going to be somewhere for multiple days, I tried to do Airbnbs. And if it was just going to be like a one night overnight, do I would do like a hotel just because yeah. then it would give everybody their own space and be like affordable. Yeah. But like, so St. Ives, we found like a gorgeous Airbnb that fit our whole group, which was impressive. Um, yeah. And then like London, we did hotels because like yeah. you're not going to find something for that big of a group. And it's just easier to split everybody up at that point, give everybody kind of a break. And then um, Edinburgh, we did like a Airbnb. Yeah. And then like Inverness, just a hotel because we were there for a night. Mm-hmm. And do you have favorites out of those? Yeah. Um, our Isle of Sky Airbnb, I booked as soon as it was available on Airbnb because I saw yeah, it like two yeah. years ago. And I was like, that's where we need to stay. We need to stay there. Yeah. And that was probably literally, that was definitely the first thing I booked out of the entire trip was that stay. Like I said, it was right on the water. We had right on nice the water in Carbos. Two, um, you know, front courtyard, back courtyard, mm-hmm. walking trails. Lovely. And it was three bedrooms and a living room and a kitchen. And it was like perfect size for all of us. And that was before I knew our two others were going to be joining us, but it worked out that there was the inn next door. So yeah. they could just stay and give us like, give everybody kind mm-hmm. of some space to do their own thing. And it was also nice at that location. There was a little playground. Yeah. So Finn was able to go to the playground. And a little community and, store. Yeah. And yeah, perfect. Um, Matthew, which is her brother, our yeah. son, my son, he's an early riser because of his job and he likes hiking. Mm-hmm. So he was able to get up on a lot of mornings in the different locations yeah. that we were multiple nights and go for a morning hike and take some pictures mm-hmm. and and then oh, come back and we were all yeah. getting ready for the day well, that's good i know you mentioned the place you stayed in the lake district as well was a favorite uh, oh ashness farm ashness farm that was the best that oh. was um our our guide keith for the lake district recommended that um, yeah that's one of his preferred places to stay and i absolutely can see why yeah. um right up the road from ashness you're on like this tiny side road up in the like what is it northern lakes at that point mm-hmm. and um there's like a gorgeous viewpoint over all the lakes yeah. and you're on the farm and the lambs and it's a bed and breakfast so you get your your cooked full, breakfast full english breakfast. in the morning fresh break she baked the bread was it fr- the cumberland like sausage is that what that was the cumbria the cumbria, cumbria sausage, sausage. That was amazing. That was probably my second favorite thing. Yeah. Yeah. I I could have stayed there for a long time just like to go out in the morning and enjoy like the view over the lake. Um, because we're up on the hill and the lambs and everything. And my brother was able to hike the mountains behind us and you were the, you were there for the perfect time of uh, time of year for the lambs as well. Yes, there's so many lambs. <laughs> Especially because Marissa's lambs were lambing back home too. Uh, so so I was missing out on my sheep. So. Yeah, you missed them, but you got to see them there. So that's mm-hmm. really nice. Yeah. Um, so that's good. And I know you mentioned um, the White Hart Inn and Wells was somewhere else that you yes. really liked as well. Um, we loved yes. Wells. It was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I definitely wish we had had more time there. That's Absolutely. one of the places I'd go back. Um, they were so accommodating. So nice. So nice. Um, the beer, My that was my <laughs> brother's favorite place. They had a really good beer selection, I guess. Um, yeah, did, yeah. The food was good. We learned that everything's like a bit slower paced for meals in the UK compared to the States. Yeah. Because everybody like in the States, I feel like is like, okay, they sit down, they order and they want their food like pretty quickly. Bam, bam, bam. And so it's in like and out. more like relaxed and slower and we had to get used to that. Yeah. But like the food was so good. They, um, that was towards the end of our trip and my son was like, I just want a grilled cheese. And I was like what are the chances that you can make a grilled cheese for him? And I was like, literally two pieces of bread and cheese, and he will be the happiest kid ever. And the chef was like, uh, absolutely. And made him probably the best grilled cheese I've ever eaten and had a snack of. So <laughs> wow, it worked out well. Yeah. Wow. And we had, we were sharing a room Yep, and they didn't have like a really big bed. And so she, the assistant manager, I think, I think so. Was, yeah. The assistant manager came running up with, you know, a folded up, heavy quilt and made Finn a little bed on the floor Mm -hmm. and it was yeah he slept really well Mm -hmm. it was great so accommodating and Wells was just gorgeous oh my gosh beautiful cathedral 
I wish I had been able to stay for the evening song because I've heard that that's really nice. Yeah. But we went to um, the Victor's Close and the bishops got to see the bishops area, like with the water and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then we we had our tour guide Keith to tour guide Keith for that part and just the history and like being able to like learn from him. And he walked all around with us and showed us everything. And Mm -hmm. it was kind of cool. Like we get to have lunch and breakfast with him and kind of like learn about the area. So it was cool. That's cool. And I'll I'll link, um, I can hear people going, Oh, I really want to know where these places were that you guys made. And I will, I will make sure I get the names off you and uh, I'll link to those in the show notes. So um, if anybody's listening now, don't worry, there will be in the show notes and you can check (laughs) out the places that they stayed at. Yeah. And it was funny because we had two different tour guides that I was with Mm -hmm. and they had two different styles. And one of them, you know, you had a definite set agenda and this is where we're going, which was great because you knew what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, Keith, it was more of, and he actually stayed with us where we were staying. Right. And so we had a general idea of our options. And then in the evenings, when we knew kind of what the weather was going to be like, we'd sort of talk about a possible plan. And then at breakfast, we would make a more definite plan Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, we could change it as we went along. And so I liked them both equally. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, there were advantages to each one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really really nice to get the two different like styles too. Mm -hmm. And like, I would recommend highly both of them and yeah. I would definitely go back and there's a lot more. I told Keith that the next time I go back that I'll just have him, I'll just be like, here, I have a week. Tell me where I'm going. <laughs> like, I have oh. faith that like a lot of the places that we ended up going were not places I would have known about yeah. or like would have been on my radar. And it was a lot of like smaller villages and like towns that were really like nice that I wouldn't have like really known yeah. about. So and that's the thing is like you can get off the beaten track and mm-hmm. you know there's there's the places that everybody knows about but the, that's the thing about if you with somebody um you're gonna f- you know go to those places that you wouldn't necessarily know about yeah we did stonehenge but we also did what the maidens or the about, sisters oh yeah um like he showed us castle rig castle yeah. rig stone circle yeah and, and then, um mary maidens was cornwall um but there was another one with her daughters or sisters oh lone meg and her daughters like oh yes yeah. so that stone circle which was really i mean yeah it was nice to go to stonehenge but when we were at the other ones you could really get up close and personal and yes. really check it yeah. out and, um, yeah and he made sure like we knew like if you're doing stonehenge you need to be the first bus in and he had us there and he had us on the bus and had us like there first and before it got too before busy. it got busy yeah. Yeah. exactly exactly it's like that inside of knowledge isn't it yeah, it really is. Like, I wouldn't have known, um, like, we did Snow's Hill Manor. Yes. I wouldn't have known about that. Or, like, Lynn, Lynn Idwall, which was, like, a hike in uh, Wales up to, yes. like, a lake in the mountains. And those are things that would have been off my radar. And it was just really, oh, really yeah, cool. So what was that um, slate mine that we went to that oh, was really cool? Um, let me look. We went to the... It was a slate mine, and it was really That was in the cool. lakes, right? Yep. And it was... I don't even have they the had name a really neat, now. They had a really nice gift shop. But they also they did a lot of sculptures with the slate, mm-hmm. and yep. it, was, it was beautiful. I can't remember the name of it. Was it yeah. Slager? I don't remember. I don't have that down. I just have the slate mine right now. Oh, but yeah. Like, we were able to do a lot more and, like, see a lot of gardens and stuff that I wouldn't have known about. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah, you, you definitely had a, a you know a, a, a well a kind of well rounded experience. That's mm-hmm. what I describe it as. That you you know you got to go deeper, you got to go further, you got to see more than you would have done. I think, yeah, um, if you hadn't thing, organized it the way that you did. Um, mm-hmm. I really liked and and Daddy really liked and Matthew Liverpool too. That was oh yes, yes. Liverpool was. It reminded me of a small Nashville here in the United States. Um, cause of the live music all the time. Yeah. And, and it, that was, I really enjoyed that too, mm-hmm. walking around there and just being able to pop into a pub and hear the music in the streets. And Roger's yeah. a huge Beatles fan. So they did the Beatles tour and oh, then great. again, met up with, um, Matthew's friend, uh, recommended her. She has like a 
a friend who's a, like a like an big Beatles uncle guy who's yeah, also my dad around yeah. all day. Oh, and perfect. He's a huge Beatles perfect. fan. He used to work in the cavern. Yeah. And he took Matthew and Roger on a big walking tour. And they, perfect. so yeah. that, that was wonderful. That's really good. And that's the thing. It's like you, everybody on your trip got all their interests kind mm-hmm. of catered for, which was exactly what you aimed for. So, you, yeah. you know, you, you did mm-hmm. such a good, and, and I've said, to, I said this to you, I don't know, six months ago when we spoke, just like you did a really, really good job. She did. I said, she's, yeah. she's Mr. Calling. She needs yeah. to be a travel guide <laughs> or a travel yeah, planner. Yeah, you did a great one. And, and um, so I was thinking about, um, was there anything that surprised you about the trip? Because obviously you're prepared, but you know, when you go somewhere that you haven't been before, but, and often a lot of people think they know the UK because you watch a lot of TV. And yeah. You see so was there anything that, that surprised you when you, when you came over? Um. I don't know. I feel like I was just kind of surprised by how tired I was from traveling. Um, but like, I don't know. I don't know if there was like a really like everybody was so nice and yeah. the food was so good. And like, just, I think everything went really smoothly. The weather was probably better than maybe it thought. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> was the weather better than you expected? Cause yes, I, I think that was that a is surprise. True. That was the surprise. I think that, that the was, weather was so good. We had, probably like one washout day when we were in Lyme Regis and we walked to the fossil beach. Cause that was the reason we were there was to see the fossils. Yeah. And we walked the mile to the fossil beach in the gale. It was like one of the days where they had the like gale eight or something and yeah. pouring rain. Oh no. We were literally looked like we had been swimming for like hours by the time we got done with our walk. So worth it though. Cause it was something that we were only there for like one day and we weren't gonna be able to do it the next day. Cause the tide was going to be off and whatnot. Yeah. So other than that, though, like we really we got some showers and stuff, but we got really lucky. But back home while we were there getting 65 and sunny, they had two weeks solid of rain, Oh, really? which is not what we usually get. Ah. So we went to England for the good weather and yeah. the rain stayed at home, apparently. Oh, well, that's OK. It was better that way around for sure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it was a surprise, but I think one of the things that. I was really struck by was the the history and because you know we're from the states and we're a relatively very young country mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. compared to your country in the UK <laughs> and so just you know seeing the buildings and the stones and I remember walking with Keith and saying just you know Keith how old would you say the stonework is oh that's probably you know three four hundred years old you know and that's something that you know, yes. our oldest places are, you know, maybe 100, 150. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really, and yeah. for me, I think the most emotional moment is I had done some ancestry and found that um, I was, re- I'm directly related to the McBains in Scotland. And yeah. my, my great grandfathers were the clan chiefs. So we went to the McBain um, Museum Memorial. Memorial. Yeah. But there's a little park there. And then when we went to the Battle of um, Culloden, yeah. Culloden. Culloden, I always say it wrong. Like the third stone that we saw on the walkway was my great, 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 great Gellius McBain. Wow. McBean. And so that was very powerful for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. And that, that's, it's nice to be able to do that, isn't it? It's nice to be able to go back and kind of get that connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm you know with generations past but be able to do it but even I you know I obviously you know I'm from the UK and but even I, you know my great grandfather was from Cornwall and I love it when I go down there because I feel that connection with the tin mines down in Cornwall yeah um you know even though it's 120 years ago then he moved up to Northumberland but it, it but it's mm-hmm. lovely but for you guys but to come across from from the states to be able to do yeah. that it, it's it's amazing isn't it to kind of get mm-hmm. in touch with the with the with your roots you know, however far back it is that you can, you know, have, yeah. find that connection. So that's lovely. Now I'm going to ask you one more because I'm, I'm kind of conscious of the time because we're on four, 44 minutes already. So we're doing a lot of talking today, which is brilliant. It's really good to talk to you guys. Yep. But if there's if there was anything that you were going to do differently, because I know you're going to plan another trip, Marissa. I know you're definitely going to. Is there anything you would do differently? Yeah, I would not get COVID while I was there. Oh, yeah, yeah you got sick, didn't you? Yeah. Oh. No, there, there. I think. I think we would have, um, for me to do differently, would have slowed down and tried to maybe done just 
two or three things or two things and then left more free time to just wander about, you know, as you're, when you're driving about and you see a cute little town and yeah. I like to window shop and things like that. Um, that's just me. Um, so that's, I think something that I would have done differently is just spent more time, had, had more free time to just kind of wander about. Yeah. But the way that I had to do it with so many things, we didn't really get that opportunity, but the next time I would definitely do like, make sure that I'm in like the same place for two or three nights instead of like a bunch of one night stays. Yeah. Um, so that I could see more and then like we packed pretty light, but like even packing lighter. Um, but yeah. like I packed for my son and I in a check bag and backpacks Yeah, and I still had outfits that I packed that I probably didn't wear, even though I only packed like five outfits, yeah. but we made sure we had laundry every week yeah, and I did the same, but I really could have packed less. Um, but it's yeah. also hard to pack for the UK because you, you've got like, it's almost like you're packing for three different seasons because you just don't know what you're going to get. Especially Absolutely. going from Cornwall to sky. We didn't know like what the temperature differences were going to be, Yeah, but it really, I could have packed less, um, reminding myself that if there's something I need, I can buy it there. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, I, I, even I've done that. I've, I was just, uh, cause I've been over for 12 weeks. So I try to minimally pack and i've still got stuff that i'm looking at the cupboard going i don't think it's actually going to be warm enough i think it was maybe a bit optimistic about thinking it was going to be very hot and it's not which it was last yeah. july and um, then i'm not going to wear so i think i think that's yeah. you know it doesn't matter how many outfits there's always something you think oh i've not worn that um yeah so, so it is difficult and as you say for the uk because the weather can be so variable and you were going mm -hmm. from right down south to right up north and that there's a big mm -hmm. temperature difference then as well so it's difficult to know yeah um, but now I always end the podcast with the, the same question for everybody. So I'm going to ask you guys if there was uh, one tip you would give to anyone planning their trip to the UK for the first time, what would that be? Um, mine would be doing the itinerary consult because it really like made my anxiety so much less because um, I was so stressed out and so worried that I was going to get something wrong and like mess up the whole trip for everybody and put a lot of pressure on myself. But that just being able to like, have the two extra sets of eyes overview it and like, kind of like, Nope, it looks good. Like, here's my suggestion on this and that just really, I feel like took my stress to that level down a lot and like really made it so that I could like enjoy the trip while we were on it. And I didn't have to worry like, Oh, did I mess something up? Did I mess something up? That's so I think that was really my, my thought. That's brilliant. And we, we, we loved, we loved working with you, Marissa and, and helping you and, um, it has been a pleasure for the last couple of years, really, since you've been planning, yeah. kind of going, <laughs> going through it. And um, and it was just so lovely when you were on the trip and that you shared in the group. And, mm -hmm. and I know you sent me some messages saying how things were going. I was asking and it, it was just yep. lovely to have that. And that that's one of the things that's really special um, for myself and Doug is that, you know, when, when we do the itinerary consult, so it's like we get to know you guys. So, yeah. it, you know, and it, it's been, it's fantastic. The only, the only thing was I didn't get the chance to meet you when you were over. I know. Oh, that was something we couldn't coordinate, but, but I'm just so pleased that you had, had such a wonderful trip and that. You'll you know, just have back. to come to Maine. Yeah. Well, come to Maine. <laughs> we will do. Anyway, so I just want to say a huge thank you to Marissa yeah. and Cindy. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and talking us through your trip. It's been brilliant. Thanks very much to Marissa and Cindy once again for coming on this week's episode of the podcast. It was really great to talk to you guys about your trip and get your trip report and recommendations via podcast. So thanks very much, you guys, for agreeing to do that. You will find links to everywhere that Marissa talked about in this episode. So the accommodation and the guides that they used in this week's show notes, which is at uktravelplanner.com forward slash episode 50. I just want to say thanks to everyone for supporting the show, whether that's via um, the tip your guide button on a website or via sponsoring the podcast, which you can now do. Uh, from as little as $3 a month. We really, really appreciate that. And I will be giving a shout out in an episode soon for everybody who is sponsoring us because we absolutely appreciate it so much. It's lovely that you do that. Do pop over and join the Facebook group as well if that's something that you're interested in joining our community over there. Information about our uh, itinerary consultation service as well will be in the show notes. And we will be reopening that service again in July. Uh, we do a limited number uh, every month. So if it is something that you think you would like to do, 
please take a, a check out the link and see if you can uh, book a slot. Anyway, that's until next week. That's all leaves me to say as usual. is a happy UK travel planning. Thank you.